Well, today, guys, you are in for a treat. I am here to tell you, to give you the motivation, the advice, the insider know-how to get where I got to today so you can be here but not here, like on an equal level, yeah? Okay. I want to know. Tell me, Rachel. Tell me your secret to success. Something. I mean, what? What? You're scared? Are you scared to go up? Are you scared to get to the top? Are you scared to succeed? Well, how about you stop being a little bitch? You're completely right. I need to stop being a little bitch. I'm not scared to reach the top. I'm reaching, Rachel. I'm reaching. Um, get up. Stand up. Wait to the end of the video. Um, and, and then... And then, and then, and then you take your computer, and then, then you just smash the computer. Just, just smash it, and smash it, and smash it. Hey all, so today I have a question from a subscriber I wanted to answer. First off, the intro clip was from a fairly recent Rachel Oates video. If you haven't seen her channel, I'll link it in the description box. I think she makes fun content, so please check her stuff out. And uh, sorry Rachel, I couldn't resist. Now on to the question. It's fairly long, so bear with me, but I have a question and I am curious as to your opinion. And if you choose to answer this question, feel free to answer it as a video or as a private message. I would probably be asking the same question of Cosmic Skeptic and Bionic Dance to see multiple points of views. So first about me, I'm an atheist and a chemist. I choose to engage with people often about different subjects, including religion. My point though is not to necessarily win the argument, but to try and get the person I'm talking to to try and understand their own beliefs better and develop my own. This means that sometimes I must play devil's advocate and ask questions as if I thought God existed in the case of religion. I also believe the quote that the sign of a well-educated mind is that it can contemplate an idea without necessarily accepting it. Not the exact quote, but you get the idea. So I'm proposing as a devil's advocate a question about the morality of God. In this case, the Judeo-Christian God. Throughout your videos and many other videos, there's always a reference to the atrocities of the Old Testament where God killed off the firstborn. You know, the innocent civilians in a war between God and the pharaohs that God was instigating killed off most of the world in a flood and ordered countless other events. From our point of view, this would indicate that God cannot be all good because he is committing or ordering things that we would consider heinous now. But assuming for a moment that God does exist, that would mean that, as described, we can reasonably assume that he is the keeper of the afterlife. What if God chose to give special treatment, either direct entry to heaven or some form of reincarnation, believed in by a few Christian sects and other religions to the people slain by these events, that to us seems dramatic because of our smaller view of the world. Because what is a few moments of pain caused by God in your life if you get to spend the next million years in heaven, or are reincarnated and given a fresh and perhaps even a better start? And if a God exists, and from that an afterlife exists, could exist, then one could assume that a soul would exist. And from the point of view of an immortal, all-powerful being, what would be the more important aspects of a person to preserve, their bodies, which will fail in a space of time, that such a being may consider a blink of an eye, or the apparent immortal soul. This is ignoring the belief required factor to make God happy. Would such a view change any moral problems that develop from God's acts and orders in the Bible? Alright, so thanks for the question, Scott. So the first thing I want to point out is that I don't use examples such as the Great Flood and the supposed genocide that resulted as an example because I want to hold God to my version of morality or ethics. I use these stories because they contradict the supposed objective morality that God himself supposedly set out. In other words, this God has said that murder is bad or objectively wrong, yet it can subjectively break its own rules, thus destroying the ethical standards it supposedly set out as morally correct. Second, no, I do not think that causing pain for a relatively brief amount of time, especially against the victim's will, in return for an eternity of what some might consider bliss, a get-out-of-jail-free card, if you will. Using this logic, we could justify all sorts of atrocities. For example, if a rich person decides that they want to rape someone, but they'll compensate the victim with a large sum of cash, enough to buy luxuries throughout their lifetime, does that make the rape okay? If not, and I assume most sane people would say it's not okay, then why would this standard not hold true for a god? Third, why would causing any sort of suffering be necessary for this clean start you mentioned, or the transition into the afterlife, if there were such a thing? If this god is all-powerful, it could simply blink someone into the afterlife, 
without resorting to causing pain to the person making the transition. Causing the subject suffering would be completely unnecessary. So yes, the stories you mentioned show that the God described in the Bible violates its own rules of morality, which means that by its own standards it can't be considered all good. It causes pain when it could avoid it, and I see no reason why causing unnecessary pain in what might be considered the short term, even for long term gains, in any way mitigates or excuses the harm caused. I hope this answers your question, Scott. Thanks for sending it to me, and if you, dear watcher of my videos, decide that you'd like me to answer a question, please don't hesitate to send it my way. You can reach me by email at godlesscranium at gmail.com. I don't promise I will answer, and I'm notoriously slow reading my mail. I blame my full-time job and stuff. But I do eventually read my mail, and I enjoy answering questions that pique my interest. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and cheers. I suck at being angry. <laughs> <laughs>